Okay, next we're looking at uh, extreme values again, but in this case we're talking about absolute maximum and absolute minimum. All right, let's read the definition first. It says, in an interval, the function f of x has an absolute maximum at x equals c if f of c is greater than or equal to all other f of x in that interval. That is to say that you might have several points that are local maximum, but the highest point, the highest point there on that graph will be the absolute maximum, all right? And alternatively, if you're talking about the absolute minimum, well, it's just the opposite. The lowest point of all those low points, the lowest, the, the bottom most, will be the absolute minimum. Okay, so sounds good, but let's draw a picture. So let's take a look at the very next example. Okay, so here it is. This is draw an example of a function with labeling that emphasizes the absolute maximum and minimum. Okay, I think that should be fairly easy to do. So let's go ahead and draw something here. Well, suppose we're working on this interval right here. There's our interval. All right, now we're going to draw a graph here. And let's say that it starts off right about here, comes up right about here. And there we go, it ends right there. So there's our interval. All right, let's say that it's some interval between, I don't know, let's say A and D. So it's an interval, whether it's open or closed is another thing. Let's say then it's clo a closed interval between A and D in this case. All right, so here is my A value. Here is my D value. There they are. All right, A and D. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for the bottommost point and the highest point. Okay. Well, I notice here that this is seems to be some kind of minimum. This seems to be some kind of minimum. And this seems to be some kind of minimum. Well, all of these points right here comprise what we call the local minimums. But when we look at this, we notice that only one of those is the bottom most. Okay, so let's take a look again. This point right here at the bottom it's just the bottom most. You see, this is the lowest of all of these minimum values. Okay, so I'm going to write up here at the top uh, that I have, let's get that pen there, x equals a, all right, as my absolute minimum. Okay, now let's point out then our maximum values. All right, well, I see a maximum here, perhaps a maximum there, right? Pretty high. But this point right here, and we're going to call this point, suppose, B, all right? This one right here in this area is just the highest, all right? So this is the highest point up here. You might write that down that this is the highest. So we're going to say then that at x equals B, well, we have our absolute maximum. All right. So should be fairly easy now to see, now that we've given this illustration, what the absolute uh, extrema are. All right. So I want you to also notice that it wasn't necessarily all both endpoints that were the min and the max. All right. So you're going to have to take a look when you're doing this, uh, you know, algebraically anyway, you're going to have to take a look uh, at, at the endpoints, but also critical values in between. All right, so that's going to be important to note on the next example. So let's take a look at this example. It says, find the absolute maximum and minimum of f of x equals negative x cubed minus 4x squared plus 1 uh, over the interval between uh, negative 5 and 1. Okay, so as noted before, we're going to have to look at both the endpoints and the critical values. Well, we already know the endpoints, so let's go ahead first and find those critical values. So that's what I'm going to do first. That's going to be very important here. Okay, 
So let's see here. I'm going to find f prime of x, all right, and my derivative here is simply negative 3x squared minus 8x. And again, critical value, since it's a polynomial, I need to just set it equal to 0 because it's everywhere differentiable. So set it equal to 0. I'm going to factor out um, my GCF, which in this case will be negative x. And uh, that's going to leave me with 3x plus 8. And again, it's equal to 0. So in the first case here, negative x equals 0. Well, in that case, then, x equals 0 is my first critical value. And uh, then I'm going to set 3x plus 8 equal to 0. And I'm going to get 3x equals negative 8. Therefore, x equals negative 8 thirds, which is approximately, suppose, uh, negative 2.8. Six seven. Okay, so I've got my critical values x equals 0, x equals negative 2.67 and what I'm going to have to do next is evaluate the original function at uh, the uh, two endpoints and then at these two critical values. So that's going to help me determine um, where my absolute maximum and absolute minimum are. Okay, so go ahead and jot that down for a second. You might consider pausing the video at this time to write that information down because I'm about to clear the screen. Okay, I've cleared my screen for you. Now let's go ahead and list those values. I'm going to list them up at the top, all right, that we're going to need to consider. Well, we're going to consider x equals 0, negative 2.67 all right uh, let's see here the endpoint negative 5 and the endpoint 1 I'm going to need to consider these values of X right now in my original function to determine the absolute maximum and absolute minimum of the function all right so to do this we're gonna find first f of 0 we're gonna find f of negative 2.67 we're going to find f of negative 5 and f of 1 okay fairly simple fairly straightforward uh, again you can plug these into you're going to plug them in to this original function up here and you can probably easily do that on your calculator and and that might be the best advice especially since you're dealing with a, a decimal number negative 2.67 there Okay, so I've already taken the guesswork out of this for you. Uh, when we plug in 0, we're simply going to get, in this case, 1. When we plug in negative 2.67, we're going to get approximately negative, oh, I'm going to round off just a little bit, negative 8.4815. Uh, when we plug in negative 5, we're going to get uh, 26. And when we plug in 1, we're going to get negative 4. Okay, take a look at those and I want you to think for a second. So go ahead and think, look at the values there. Now that you've had a chance to take a look at the values, okay, what do you notice? Well, I notice that this seems to be the smallest value and this right here seems to be the largest value. Hmm, that's interesting. We might write that down. Okay, so this one right here, this is the smallest. All right, and this one right here is the largest. All right, well, it's exactly as we see it. When x equals negative 2.67, we have an absolute minimum and when x equals negative 5 we have an absolute maximum so let me write that down for you okay so I'm gonna jot down my answer over here so I have an absolute and in this case the first one I'm gonna go with is the absolute max I have an absolute max 
and I'm going to write down the coordinates for this. Absolute max at negative 5, 26. There's my point. That is my absolute maximum point at negative 5, 26. Again, I get that from my calculation here, x and then y. And of course, my absolute ma minimum in this case, so my absolute minimum at, well, what was it again? This thing right here, negative 2.67 and negative 8.4815. Okay, so there is my absolute maximum and my absolute minimum values. Again, it didn't necessarily have to occur at the endpoints. One of them was the endpoint. The other was uh, one of the critical values from, from in between the interval. So again, it's important to note that the critical values need to be in the interval. Otherwise, you can throw them out. So I hope this is a, a good understanding for you of how to find uh, absolute max and absolute min, which are also known as the absolute extrema. Made with DoodleCast Pro.